You find yourself in Africa, land of unique wildlife, home to a great variety of cultures and languages, and, first and foremost, host to the world's largest hot desert, the Sahara. It's daytime, and you are thirsty for some water and shade. You've been walking for days, trying to find one of those precious-looking oases. You feel you're near, but the horizon just keeps stretching and stretching. Your mind is tired, and your body is feeling all the heat. It's like you've eaten a full plate of hot pepper and then some more, judging by how much you're sweating. And when I say hot, think 100 degrees Fahrenheit hot on average. No wonder this is happening. After all, you find yourself in the world's biggest hot desert. Now I say hot desert since the biggest deserted landscapes are actually the cold ones, located in Antarctica and the Arctic. I see Antarctica's frozen desert is more or less the size of 1 million LAXs. Yep, the Los Angeles International Airport. The Arctic Desert is just a bit smaller than that. Now, in case you don't know, the Sahara Desert is located in northern Africa, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean all the way over to the Red Sea. It occupies an area large enough to place approximately 100,000 Disney World theme parks side by side. According to scientists, its boundaries are expanding. Deserts usually form in the subtropics because of what's called Hadley circulation. The air rises at the equator and descends into the subtropics. This circulation of air has a drying effect, which helps the formation of desert landscapes. Since the 1920s, the Sahara is considered to have expanded by over 10%. How is this happening? Well, let's start from the beginning. You probably know the Sahara Desert as one of the most inhospitable places on Earth today. Just FYI, for a place to be considered a desert, it has to receive less than 4 inches of rain per year. Due to the very small precipitation index, deserts are usually dry and arid places. There is little humidity in the air, and daytime temperatures can go as high as 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually, there isn't that much animal and plant life because of the lack of water. But in the Sahara's case, it wasn't always like that. It may be difficult to imagine northern Africa without the tons of sand it has today. But about 20,000 years ago, the Sahara was actually one big oasis. Recent discoveries show clear evidence of what the scientists now call the Green Sahara. In the mid-1800s, a German explorer crossing the Sahara encountered some paintings and engravings that nomad artists had left behind. What he saw in those paintings looked nothing like his actual surroundings. Instead of an arid landscape with only camels and desert vegetation, the rock paintings depicted jungle animals like giraffes and hippos. There were even images of livestock and grazing animals such as cattle and sheep, something that seems impossible for modern-day Sahara. Artists usually draw what they see around them, so this finding really intrigued the German explorer. The drawings were so detailed that the artists must have had close contact with those animals. You can find this rock art spread out in the northern part of the African continent, from Western Sahara to Saudi Arabia. Geologists soon took a keen interest in this and found the first clues to what this could mean. They have been able to confirm that, in fact, northern Africa was once much wetter. They found evidence from nearby deep-sea sediment off the coast of Mauritania. Sampled cores of underwater sand and mud, known as Saharan dust flux, show geologists that, indeed, a green Sahara was possible. The more dust is blowing off of the desert and into the bottom of the ocean, the drier the climate in the region. The sediment cores show that there was much less dust, only half as much, coming off northern Africa during the humid period. This period has to do with Earth's natural cycles. Normally, the Earth rotates at a tilt of 23.5 degrees. But this angle is not consistent and changes over time. Earth's tilt is responsible for the amount of sunlight each hemisphere receives. It affects several ecosystem functions on the planet. During the time of the Green Sahara, the Earth received between 4 and 8% more sunlight than it does today. So when the Earth tilted about 20,000 years ago, the northern hemisphere received more direct sunlight which affected humidity levels in the region. As the northern hemisphere got warmer, this affected monsoon activity, more specifically, the West African monsoon. Monsoons are wind systems that affect a region's rainfall index and humidity levels. As a part of the globe gets warmer, it allows for more air to rise. 
It combines with the wind to draw moisture up into the atmosphere. Little by little, northern Africa also became wetter. The increased moisture made the Sahara so wet that there were actual bodies of water in the region. As vegetation grew, the plants held on to moisture better than bare sand could. There is evidence of natural basins throughout the Sahara and lakes so big they would fit all of the U.S.'s Great Lakes inside of them. Archaeologists uncovered evidence of vibrant societies in what are now arid areas. It looks like ancient cultures were able to take full advantage of the African humid period. According to researchers, the human population peaked across the Sahara about 9,000 years ago. There are traces of fireplaces, hunting tools, fish hooks, and even mounds of fish bones. Records show that there have been over 230 green periods over the span of 8 million years. Solar radiation is always changing due to natural orbital cycles. That's why Earth will most certainly see another green Sahara moment. It might be thousands of years from now, but it will happen. The same way the Sahara turns green, it turns yellow again. Let's put it like that. All it takes is a significant axial tilt and a few years of readjusting. However, another phenomenon is calling the attention of scientists now. Recent studies by the National Science Foundation from the University of Maryland show the Sahara has expanded 10% over the past 90 years. This phenomenon is called desertification, which literally means fertile land turning into desert land. The Sahara Desert is now advancing into the semi-arid region of Sahel. In 1950, this region was home to 31 million people. Today, its population is over 100 million people. This rapid population growth has largely contributed to the Sahara's expansion. Farmers that were once nomads began settling down. Land usage grew more intense, aiding in weakening the soil. The demand for food has caused an overcropping of the land, so even more of it is turning into the desert now. The study also shows that natural climate cycles can affect rainfall in the Sahara and the Sahel. Scientists affirm that all deserts fluctuate, not only the Sahara. A desert's boundary may expand in the dry winter and contract during the wetter summer. South of the Sahara lies the Chad Basin. It is a natural body of water that now serves as an indicator of the Sahara's expansion. The Chad Basin is located in the region where the Sahara is advancing southward. An atmospheric and ocean expert from the University of Maryland explains that rainfall has reduced greatly in the entire region. Due to reduced rainfalls, there is less water across the entire basin, and even Chad Lake is drying out. Just like the Sahara, the Atacama Desert in Chile, deemed the world's driest, is also expanding. It is located north of the city of Santiago, and its southern border is expanding toward the Chilean capital. Because the climate is getting drier and drier here, the city of Santiago is turning into an arid or semi-arid region itself. The once fertile valleys of local rivers that lived on agriculture and livestock for many generations are losing their revenues as Chilean land is turning into a desert. Since 2010, Santiago has received only a third of its annual rainfall. Outside of the city, farmers are digging holes in search of blue gold, or simply put, water. The situation here is very similar to that of Sahel. So tell me this, were you as surprised as I was to find out what has been happening in the Sahara region? Feel free to share in the comments below. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Under the burning sun, among the sand dunes, somewhere in the Sahara Desert, you're walking in search of an ancient treasure. Finally, you find a strange rock in the sand. It's big, looks like a large piece of black coal or rock, but something shiny on its surface makes the rock unusual. This unique find is the oldest thing that has ever been discovered on our planet. This rock was born long before Earth appeared in outer space. The unusual meteorite was found in 2020, in a remote area of the Sahara Desert. Scientists have analyzed the isotopes of magnesium and aluminum on the stone's surface and found that its age is about 4.5 billion years. At the moment, this is the oldest sample of magma from space in history. It belongs to a small protoplanet that didn't have time to form completely. It happened a very long time ago when our solar system was forming. 
Many huge asteroids were floating in space. Some of them were formed into huge celestial bodies, which later became planets. The big rocky planets were absorbing the smaller ones. The rock was part of a little protoplanet that just began its formation, but another huge asteroid destroyed it. The planet shattered into billions of pieces. Some of them became part of other planets, some flew outside the solar system, and one piece that had been wandering in space until our Earth was formed. After that, it hit the planet's atmosphere and fell into the territory now known as the Sahara Desert. The rock was discovered in 2020, but the erosion of extraterrestrial rocks shows that it could have fallen much earlier. This ancient thing weighing around 70 pounds has several pieces of different meteorites inside. In simple words, it's a volcanic rock consisting of lava. It has cooled, solidified, and crystallized. That's why you notice the glitter. Scientists hope that further study of the rock will help to learn more about our solar system foundation. The biggest asteroid discovered in the U.S. is the Willamette. Its size is 84 square feet, and its weight is more than 15 tons. This is half the weight of a bus. Several people can fit on the surface of this outer space object. But the coolest thing is that it's not a rock like most meteorites that were found. Willamette is made of nickel and iron. This massive piece of metal was discovered in 1906. Now, the huge rock is kept at the American Museum of Natural History. The largest meteorite ever found is Hoba. It's located in Namibia, and people have never changed its position because it's too heavy. The weight of Hoba is 60 tons. It's heavier than a tank. The next space-related event occurred on February 28 in southwest England. On this day, a huge flash lit up the sky. Then there was a loud crash. Several residents opened the doors of their houses and noticed a black sooty spot on the lawn. They immediately guessed what had happened and reported the discovery to the British Meteorite Observation Network. If you ever find a meteorite, report it to some geological research or space center as soon as possible. The longer a space rock lies on the ground, the faster it loses its value. Rain, dust, snow, wind, scorching sun, all these factors damage the surface of the meteorite. It makes it difficult to study the celestial object. The meteorite found in England looks like coal, but it's way softer and more fragile. It most likely used to contain frozen water. The rock is part of a huge asteroid that plowed through outer space when our solar system hadn't fully formed yet. They found a unique combination of minerals inside the rock. It can help scientists learn more about the origins of the solar system and life on Earth. Now we're heading to Germany, to the small town of Nördlingen. A huge ancient meteorite's hidden here. It's very difficult to notice it unless you know the secret of this town. You're walking along the cozy little streets and looking at the buildings with beautiful architecture. You spend the whole day there and don't find anything that reminds you of a meteorite. To solve the mystery, you need to get out of town. So you climb a high hill and see that the city is located inside a pit. For a long time, locals were sure the house was located in the crater of an extinct volcano. If you look at the houses from a certain angle, you may notice an unusual shining coming from them. In the middle of the 20th century, a group of geologists came here and immediately declared that the crater doesn't look like a volcanic one. The town was built on a huge crater left by a meteorite. The huge celestial body fell here about 15 million years ago. It was so hot that the carbon bubbles inside instantly turned into small diamonds. When people were building this city, they didn't know they were using expensive stones, since the diamonds were hardly visible. The locals never attached importance to the fact that the city walls shine unusually in the sun. Now they believe this place was built from diamonds that had fallen from the sky. Our next stop is in the UK again. This time, the rocks are of an earthly origin. The famous Stonehenge. People place circles of rocks here in a certain order. Everyone knows about this archaeological monument, but no one knows the reason for its creation for certain. Another construction built out of mysterious rocks was discovered just two miles away. It's called Superhenge. It's bigger, heavier, and takes up more space. Each plate here is 15 feet, which is about the height of two floors. Once, the stone stood vertically and formed a huge semicircle. But someone pushed the stones over about 4,500 years ago. 
It was a college prank. No, not really. That's why they couldn't be detected for a long time. Scientists still can't solve the mystery of Superhenge, but they believe the standing vertical stones were part of some huge monument. Some other amazing rocks are located in the south of Costa Rica. There are big ones the size of a human, and there are smaller ones the size of bowling balls. And they all have a perfectly round shape. These giant rocky spheres were created by people. It must have taken years of polishing using stone tools to get the perfect round shape. These balls are incredibly heavy, but can easily roll like a basketball. All the rocks are of a different age. Some of them were created about 2,500 years ago. Most of them are made of molten volcanic magma. Until now, scientists don't know for what purpose these stones were used. They were found in different parts of Costa Rica, near big cities. It's possible that ancient civilizations installed them specifically to show the greatness of local kings. Also, many experts believe the rocks were used as a tool for studying astronomy. The people who knew their purpose of the rocks had disappeared, and the history of the stones was lost along with them. Let's finish our journey with the coolest archaeological find. You're walking through the desert of Peru and climbing a low hill. You look down and notice the surface of the hill is covered with strange lines. You walk far away and see a huge cat on the hill. Such a drawing is called a geoglyph. Its length is around 120 feet, which is about half the size of a Boeing commercial jet. Archaeologists discovered the giant cat in 2020 and found out that it had been created somewhere between 200 and 100 BCE. This huge drawing is part of a mysterious group of different pictures. In addition to the cat, there are other animals, plants, and fantastic figures. All of them were found in the desert of Peru. The kitten was found by chance. Archaeologists didn't see it at first, because natural erosion on the hillside had almost erased the silhouette. You're walking along a hot desert under the scorching sun. You run out of supplies. There's no more water. You dream about rain, but there are no clouds in the sky. With each step, you lose more and more strength and fall. You notice a small pond nearby. Is it real water or just a mirage? You can't get to your feet, so you crawl there. The water is getting closer by the minute, but not because you're moving towards it. It's the water approaching you. In a few minutes, the pond area increases. Here, you're already in it. A small lake is formed, 60 feet deep, at the place where the piece of desert was. This real event happened in 2014 in the Tunisian desert. No one knows exactly on what day the lake appeared, since this part of the south of Tunisia is sparsely populated. At first, shepherds passing by saw the lake and didn't believe their eyes. In the next few hours, hundreds of locals came running to the place. They began to swim, jumping into the water from the surrounding rocks. But a few days later, something strange happened to the lake. In the beginning, it was a crystal clear turquoise blue color, but then it turned dark green. People didn't attach any importance to this and continued to swim. They shouldn't have done that. The scientists and geologists arrived and immediately announced that it wasn't safe to swim in the lake. Muddy green water means the lake is stagnating. It's not refreshed, it's not fed by underground springs. Now the lake is filled with algae and a lot of harmful bacteria that can cause serious diseases. They also found out that this region of Tunisia is filled with huge deposits of phosphate. This substance can disintegrate and leave radioactive traces. The lake can be carcinogenic, toxic, and hazardous for any living organism. But people didn't worry about this too much. They walk in the middle of the desert, while the sun heats the air to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of them are unlikely to refuse to jump into cool water, despite the warnings of scientists. Until now, no one knows exactly the reason for the appearance of the lake. Some scientists believe the lake was formed because of heavy rains. The lake is surrounded by rocks and is located inside a canyon. The water could just accumulate after each storm. Some geologists think an earthquake was the cause of the lake. A small seismic activity provoked the rupture of the Earth's rock above the water table. And through this hole, all the water splashed out. 
And if this theory is correct, then the lake can be pulled back underground through cracks. This is the same as when you pull the plug out of a drain hole in a filled bathtub. Any small earthquake is like pulling the plug out. Therefore, if you find yourself in these places, don't swim in this radioactive lake. We're going to the Caribbean Islands region. Among the clear blue sea, you can find a unique lake. It's located on one of the paradisical islands. You may not even notice the lake right away. The entire territory may seem like a huge concrete platform, but the main thing is not to step on its surface. Pitch Lake is a lake filled not with water, but with liquid asphalt. This is the largest asphalt deposit in the world. Steam is coming from all over the lake as it's hot. The depth of this lake is 250 feet. An entire passenger Boeing could fit there in an upright position. The lake is not fully studied, but scientists believe there's a deep fault in the Earth's crust under it. A huge amount of oil seeps through it. It passes through various chemical compounds and turns it into the asphalt. According to rough estimates, there are about 10 million tons of hot material inside this place. Theoretically, no life can exist in such conditions, but scientists have discovered a colony of microbes. Somehow, these creatures have learned to survive here. This also suggests that life outside of our planet may exist. The largest moon of Saturn, Titan, has many hydrocarbon lakes on the surface. And if the simplest forms of life appeared among a million tons of molten asphalt here on Earth, then nothing prevents them from appearing on Titan. We're going to Indonesia, to the island of Java. You need to climb a large volcano to see the next phenomenon. The volcano is overgrown with grass and trees, but it doesn't seem to be sleeping. Smoke is pouring out of its mouth. You climb to the top and see a clear lake instead of boiling magma. The blue sky is reflected in its bright turquoise surface. But don't try to jump there. This lake is filled with acid. The magma inside volcanoes comes from the deep bowels of the Earth's crust. The incandescent liquid consists of many molten metals and chemical compounds, and the lake is filled with particles of these metals. In addition, the volcano emits sulfur dioxide gases. When they combine with metals, they form a beautiful turquoise color. You'd better come back here at night. In some places, a lot of sulfur is concentrated. These accumulations come out of the lake and come into contact with the air. When this happens, everything around bursts into bright blue flame. It's safe to observe this from the side, but don't get too close. Nearby, on this island, there's another acid lake. It also releases sulfurous gases into the air, which are easily ignited when in contact with oxygen. And when this happens, the gases burst into a bright blue electric flame. It's difficult to see the flames during the day. At night, you can see these flashes from afar. Our next location is Australia. You start the drone high above the forest area. Among the green, dense forests, you can see a bright pink spot. It's our lake. This time, the beautiful pink color may not stop you from swimming. You can relax here and take beautiful photos. The lake attracts thousands of tourists, but scientists have only recently been able to find out the reason for the unusual color. At the bottom of this salty lake in Melbourne, special algae grow and secrete a red pigment. In combination with sunlight, high temperatures, and a small amount of precipitation, it turns the lake pink. By the way, Australia is not the only place with such a phenomenon. There are lakes with a pink tinge of water all over the world. You can find them in Senegal, Bolivia, Kenya, and many other countries. The water of these places is also salty and contains the red pigment of unusual algae. We leave the hot beaches and fly to cold Canada. Here, we see a frozen Lake Abraham. We step on the ice and notice huge frozen bubbles inside. They resemble jellyfish, and there are thousands of them there. This is methane. It's a highly flammable substance. The grass, leaves, pieces of trees, and any organic substances that fall into the lake become food for a lot of bacteria that emit methane. Upon contact with frozen water, methane turns into tens of thousands of frozen balls. When the ice melts, the bubbles burst and sizzle. This phenomenon can also be observed on some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the size of the bubbles can reach several times more than balloons. It's a beautiful sight, 
but it's not safe since methane ignites when it contacts with air. We're in the coldest place of our journey. It's Antarctica, near the driest desert on Earth. A dry place doesn't mean it has to be hot. It's an area with minimum precipitation. The desert isn't sand and cacti, but a place where almost no living life inhabits. Some areas of Antarctica meet these two criteria. However, in this icy desert, you can notice a tiny lake. Its depth is only a few inches. Technically, it's a pond. But the most amazing thing is that it stays in a liquid form. The temperature here drops to negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. The pond should be frozen, but this doesn't happen. Don Juan Pond is one of the saltiest reservoirs on the planet. The amount of salt here doesn't allow the water to freeze. Scientists have been studying this lake for more than 60 years, but they still can't find out the exact reason for the appearance of water here.